Hi, I'm really uh, glad you're here taking the workshop. My name is Don Gennetti and I'm uh, leading this workshop. We're going to look at the inverse square law. Uh, I'm not a big believer in rules and laws, uh, compositional you know, rules of thirds and all those things. They kind of go in one ear and out the other. I, I, I'm not a big believer in that kind of stuff. Uh, but the rule of thirds, uh, the sunny 16 and angle of incidence equals angle of reflection are three rules in photography that are absolutes. And they are something that we've got to commit to our working uh, way of, of lighting. Um, we have to understand them and we use them all the time. In this particular uh, view here, I'm, I'm just going to break down what uh, many people look at and see as something very complex into something hopefully a little bit simpler. I know you've possibly seen this before on other websites, but um, I have uh, my own kind of way of looking at it and... Uh, We'll see what you think. So anyway, um, two feet and four feet. In two feet, up up close to the light. At two feet, it drops. The light drops off two stops. We double that distance to four feet now, and in four feet, it drops off two stops. And if we go uh, and double four feet to eight feet, it drops off to two stops. That would be f2 out at eight feet and f2.8 four feet away from f4, f4 is only two feet away from 5.6, f8 is only one foot away from f11, etc, etc. So we keep doubling the distance and going four times less light. So knowing this, we, uh, we can control not, uh, not only uh, the brightness of the light, of course, but there, there's this, this, this interesting uh, world of fall off here and how much we can control that fall off and how to understand that fall off. Let's take our subject here and put the, our subject at F16. Uh, two feet away from our subject at F16, if our light is one foot away at F16, if we're at this point, uh, the light's very close to our subject, two feet away, it's going to be two stops less. So our subject can drop off very rapidly the closer we bring our light. Think of our softbox right here and our subject and a gray background here. This gray background is going to go very dark because it's two stops underexposed. And yes, I will say that um, mathematicians and absolutists will tell you that the inverse square law uh, doesn't really work with softboxes. I'm here to tell you that it works close enough for photography. You may have to tweak it a little bit, but it works pretty damn close. You're going to pull a slide rule out, that's fine. Go be a mathematician. We're photographers. We can deal with this stuff. So yes, it's slightly off and actually these numbers are slight, these little ticks are slightly off, but believe me, <coughs> excuse me, your light meter and your photography won't see much difference. So let's say our softbox is this close, our light source right here, very close to the subject, it's going to drop off very fast behind. If our light source is far away from the subject, then our light, then our, our background doesn't drop off quite so fast. If our same gray background was here and our, our subject was two feet away from it, but this far away from our light, one, two, three, four, five feet away from the light, the background's really only going to be one stop darker or underexposed from what it normally should be because we're here. If we're here at F16, then it's going to be two stops underexposed. And if our subject's here, halfway the distance here at F45, then it's F45, F32, F16, F11, F8, 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stops underexposed, even though it's only two, one, two, three and a half feet away. So we can control our, our drop off pretty quickly. And, and with, um, with great repeatability, it's a law. This is a physical law. So it happens all the time. Nothing, you're not going to buy one. Well, my brand of lights has a different kind of uh, inverse square law. No, not going to happen. They're pretty much all the same. This inverse square law, by the way, was based on a single reflector at MIT. That's the one they used to measure it, to, to figure out exactly how to put this together. Um, 
all all other uh, lighting instruments will be slightly off but again in photography uh, that that slight difference is not as important as it is to guys with calculators and stuff so we can we can uh, well, we can make a white background white by putting our subject right next to the background here we are at f8 uh, with our subjects right up against that white wall and chances are that white wall and our subject is going to be pretty close to white. I mean, our subject is is going to be well lit at f8, and our wall, our white wall is going to be white. Okay, uh, you're going to have a shadow, but that's you know up to you whether you want a shadow or not. If you don't want a shadow, you put your subject here at uh, f11, and you shine some lights on your f4 background here. But that's a whole different ball of wax. We're not going there right now. We're just talking about the inverse square law. The fascinating thing is you can measure your light. Let's say you buy a brand new light. You can measure that light out with a, a light meter or a gray card and find where F4 is. Let's say uh, with uh, this light, F4 is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven feet away. Seven feet away at F4. Every time I put that light out, this power setting, which we're going to just say it's full power. At full power, it's going to be F4 at 7 feet. Whether it's Tuesday, whether it's the evening, whether it's whatever, that light's going to give me F4 at 7 feet. So if I know if it's F4 at 7 feet, I also know that at 1, 2, 3 feet out, it's F8. Always going to be F8 at 3 feet. Always. So I can get one major meter reading off my strobe my new strobe and i can measure it with a tape measure and figure all my exposures out from that tape measure from that point on because light does the same thing every time unless this is a very bad flash unit and it is not giving you the same power every time uh that would be uh, an issue but that's a mechanical issue not a physics issue so the inverse square law is pretty powerful and you can do an awful lot with it, especially if you understand this fall off thing. If you want less fall off between your subjects, let's go out here. Because if we have a subject here, let's clone this guy, shall we? And we have a subject here and we have a subject here. We'll group them over here in Photoshop. We have, and we put them right here at 5.6 with this first guy at 5.6. Do you see that the, the, um, come on. Do you see that the, uh, boy, this new mouse, this new Mac mouse is ridiculous. Um, you see that 5.6, that be, he's only a little bit behind this 5.6 reading uh, towards the F4, so he's not going to be much less lit maybe a third of a stop maybe this is f5 right here so 5.6 f5 right here f4.5 right here f4 4.5 5 5 6 so they're pretty tight but if we get them close to the light like here at f11 our this guy right here he's he's a half stop under He's halfway to F8 before we get uh, anything going. So he's going to be far more underexposed. So it's a very powerful tool to use, folks. Very, very powerful. And if you uh, work with it and get to know it and get to uh, experiment with it, you'll find out that you can do so much more thinking about depth and the quality of light uh, when you understand the inverse square law. So commit it to memory. Commit it to your bones so it's like muscle memory. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks for taking the class. I hope I'm helping you uh, with your photography. Let me know if you have any questions. And thanks again.